Now, we see Abraham having all these issues, having all these, you know, still back and forth, him believing Ishmael was the one. God says now, at the end of the day, he's going to be an example to us. He's an example to us that even when my faith seems to be a little weary, even when my faith seems to be a little off kilter, what God is identifying is just if there was ever a genuine confession of our faith, mm -hmm. if there was ever a time where we literally believed God when we couldn't see God. And it is Thank that Lord. that God says, mm -hmm. I will allow to be accounted to you or imputed to you for righteousness. Now, when I see the word righteousness, that word righteousness talks about having piety towards God. Okay, the, uh, piety is when one has a devotion and a confidence toward another individual. So God says, I look at all of the mistakes you made, but I see that it was covered by faith, and I'm now calling you or viewing you as righteous. The truth is this, what Abraham did was a gateway to what Jesus ultimately had done for us. Mm. Abraham was serving as a type of Christ. He was a person who said, I want to show you what righteousness looks like so that when Jesus comes and fulfills it, when you agree with what Jesus did, his righteousness is accounted to you. Hmm. So whether my faith is weak or strong or wherever, I can still access the righteousness of God by putting Jesus in the equation. But I got to realize that it's only through him. Now, Abraham, again, Abraham was before Christ. He was, you know, this is an early dispensation. Jesus comes along and he says, if you can just simply accept what it is that I've done, God will look at you through the eyes of me. He'll look at you and see me, Jesus, because my righteousness has been given over to Jesus. The Bible says this, that when Jesus died, uh, he took on not all of our, he took on all of our sins. He said that he uh, who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So Jesus took on all of our shortcomings. He took on all of our doubt, all of our issues, and nailed it to the cross so that when, in fact, he was raised from the dead and the dispensation of grace came, God says, now I'm viewing you through the righteousness of my son, Jesus Christ. Let me show you a scripture here. Let's, 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 go, let's, go to, um, let's go to Romans chapter 8. Still in the book of Romans. I'll show you something here. And I'm going to get out your way. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Kind of break down a little bit this, these familiar verses that we like to quote and deal with. Mm. Romans chapter 8, I will go 28 through 33. This is where I'm going to shut down tonight. Romans 8, 28 through 33. Scripture says this, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, who God foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. 31 says, what shall we say, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God, this is what I'm going to stop, that justifies. So when I look at these verses of scripture, you know, a lot of times we, we quote, you know, 828 because it's exciting. You know, uh, we, we like to use that to say, you know, everything's going to work out for our good, and it is, and we give him praise. But when we look at the context of the scripture, he says the only reason these things are working out for our good and working out according to his purpose is because he views us as being justified. Mm. Now, justification ties back into righteousness. So he says, what Abraham showed in faith, I let faith speak for his righteousness. So with us, what Jesus did in faith speaks for our righteousness. So when it is that I'll attempt to say, well, God, you know, I'm, I'm doing all I know to do. I'm doing the best I can. He says, yeah, that's, that's not enough. Only thing I got to do is learn how to put Jesus' righteousness in my stead. Pastor, how does that look? When I put Jesus' righteousness in my stead, that means that I'm taking Jesus with me in my issue. Now, I've said this before. When I take God or I take Christ in my issue with me, 
God is no longer going to deal with me in the issue. He's going to deal with Christ in my issue. How does that look? When Christ is being dealt with, because Christ is perfect, God says, because you had enough sense to bring Jesus with you in your issue, I'll erase your issue and I'll view you through the eyes of my son. So when the righteousness that Abraham received of God for his faith, it connects back to the same righteousness that we have by the profession of Jesus Christ. Which is why, you know, uh, Christmas, that's exciting. You know, okay, that's good. But when we look at the purpose behind it, the reason that we're celebrating is that our Savior, the one in whom we receive righteousness, was born. It gives us to understand that my, my, my perspective on righteousness now should be adjusted. God doesn't look at my dotting I's and crossing T's. He's looking to see if I can bring Jesus with me. Mm -hmm. He's not looking at my issue and my circumstance. He's looking to see if I bring Jesus with me. So when Pastor says what he said earlier about there still being measures or traces of darkness in our lives, the only reason that's there is because there's certain areas of us that we don't want to bring Jesus into. So how does that look, Pastor? Oh, thank you. Yes. So, 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 so <laughs> when, when I bring Jesus into my situation, that don't mean I got to be speaking in tongues, quoting a thousand scriptures, uh, running around the church, doing 10,000 jumping jacks and saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's not what that means. That means this. Would Jesus, this is something I want you to think about. Would Jesus be comfortable sitting with you? Mm. That's how I bring him in. That's heavy. Is, is, if, if I'm sitting in the chair, mm -hmm. is Jesus comfortable sitting beside Sister Akasha? Mm. So, Pastor, what does that mean? In your day, Sister Greer, I want you to say, mm, well, what I'm doing right now, would Jesus be comfortable here? Mm, that's good, sir. Where I am right now, mm. would Jesus be comfortable right here? That's how I bring him to my space, Sister That's Coop, good, sir. Because I'm mindful of him while I'm doing my day. So when my eyes start roaming yeah. and my mind start wandering, all I got to do is just say, mm, I wonder if Jesus would be comfortable. Mm. Mm. Yeah. While I'm talking, it, it, most of the time, because God helping us, then we ain't all the way free. But most of the time, is we just listening. We got an ear to listen. Oh, girl, I want to hear. What was that? My ear's <laughs> itching. Tell me the juiciest part of the story. Mm -hmm. Exclude all the preliminary. Just tell me the juice. To the punchline. <laughs> but would Jesus be happy in the juice? That's good, sir. That's how it looks, Sister Akasha. Is Jesus happy, comfortable, and free, D, in the juice? Mm. Well, I want to bring Jesus in my day everywhere I go. Okay, well, is Jesus comfortable sitting at your workplace with you? Mm. Is Jesus comfortable sitting in your cubicle? Is Jesus comfortable with your phone call you got to make? Mm. That's good. Is Jesus comfortable with your eye roll? Mm. Keep my eyes closed on that one. It's better. Is Jesus comfortable with your attitude? Mm. <laughs> oh, woke up. <laughs> Is he comfortable with my thoughts? And if I'm still identifying places where, well, no, I can't let Jesus in there, that's the darkness. Yeah. Because he's the light. Now check this out for the night. He already knows, but he ain't already there. Okay, mm. gotcha. Pick you up. Jesus is not comfortable in sin. So he ain't going to be there with you. He there with you. Okay, let me have a listen. You're operating under the mercy of God right. in those times where you're kicking Jesus away. When you're telling Jesus, I want you to go on hold for a minute yeah. so I can make this call because i got to tell her how I feel yeah, about you it. See you. Yeah, i, I got to really say <laughs> oh, all of it today. So check this out. Jesus, just step outside the room and put on some earphones. Mm. Because I really, I just once, I really got to tell her exactly what she needs to hear. And if you use some words that probably would make you too proud. So let me just do that, and then Jesus, you can come back. So what happens is I'm operating under his mercy, that he doesn't strike me dead while I'm telling her the way I want to tell her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the grace. No, I ain't no grace. Right. I'm under mercy. Right. I, the, the mercy of God said, I ain't going to shoot him. Mm. I ain't going to strike him with lightning. I ain't going to strike him with lightning. Mm. I'm going to give him some mercy. Now, so when I bring Jesus, and I'm done, you close your Bible. When I bring Jesus into my situation, that means all of my situations now, Sister Kanisha, are clothed in righteousness. That's what I want us to catch. 
When I bring Jesus into the situation, the situation is now clothed in righteousness. So even if, now this is heavy right here, Sister Greer, even if what's being done to me is unrighteous, when I bring Jesus in the space and in my response, I'm clothed in righteousness, even in an unrighteous situation. Clothed. I'm covered in righteousness. When others are saying and doing what they desire and saying what they desire and acting how they desire toward me, when I bring Jesus into my space, I'm covered. But when I tell Jesus, I got this one, I'll pick you up when we leave, I'm uncovered. And that's what we do, Sister Good. We tell them often, Jesus, I got this one. You don't even need to worry about it. I got this. I talk to you and give me five minutes, just five good ones. I come back and get you. That's what we do to him. And he says, that's why I still measures. That's why you're still waiting on some promises. That's why you're still waiting on some reward. Because I can't reward that. I can only reward what I see of God. So it's got to be. In order for me to operate in the way God would call me to, in order for me to receive and to, to, to flow in this extension of credit that I tried to teach y'all about tonight, I got to still be willing to bring Jesus into my space and operate according to righteousness. Amen. I'm done. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank you. I just pray that again we will continue to keep.